Hello everybody and welcome back to the Blue Lady Couture sewing room. This video is going to be part of my historical Halloween playlist. I'm going to be recreating the 18th century costume um, worn by the character Ichabod Crane in Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow. If you've been following my channel for a while you will know that I have very recently completed uh, my version of the Katrina Van Tassel uh, beautiful black and white striped 18th century gown. Um, so if you haven't already, do go and check out those videos in the playlist. So I am very fortunate and equally very excited that my husband, Mr. BLC, has decided to join me um, in helping to recreate this awesome cosplay. So I get to dabble in a bit more 18th century for a little while longer and uh, recreate some menswear for him. Now at the time of recording this video I have actually already created um, most of the outfit for him because we wore the outfits um, to an event in the summer, we wore them to Fantasy Forest Festival. Uh, so I had to kind of crack on and, uh, and get the outfits uh, finished in time for that. But, <laughs> here's the big but, um, because it was actually so, so hot this summer and the event itself was absolutely scorching, um, I actually decided to forego rushing to make the coat for him uh, because it's a black wool coat and there was just no way he was going to wear it um, you know, at a, a scorching hot event in a, in a big open field. So yes, yeah, so this video is going to focus on the making of uh, the Ichabod Crane jacket. Now I'll pop some footage in here for you uh, from Fantasy Forest Festival um, where these outfits had their first outing and you can see what I have made so far. Um, so Mr. BLC um, already has a kind of a froofy 18th century style shirt that I made actually a very long time ago now um, for a Regency Ensemble, one of the first costumes that I made for him. Um, but the, it's still going strong um, and is, is perfectly wearable, still fits him. Um, so I saw no reason really to rush to make a new shirt for him at this time and I just love the big froofy voluminous sleeves um, that this shirt has. Um, I've also made him the, the waistcoat and the breeches. So the waistcoat is a short fitted style, uh, single breasted um, with lots and lots of buttons down the front. Um, and it has a, a high collar and um, very typical of the sort of the late 18th century into the sort of the Regency era. So it is made from a black wool blend fabric um, and I believe it was 60% wool um, and the wool is actually British wool which is lovely to see. Um, so that's a, a nice little detail. I decided to go with this self-stripe uh, wool um, because I just thought it was a little bit more interesting and, and would look really nice when made up into a suit. Um, for whatever reason, whenever I was look when I was looking at fabric samples and I was looking at just the plain black wool, it just didn't excite me. And although it's a plain black wool in the original costume, as far as I can tell, um, yeah, I just decided I wanted to have something with a little bit more interest and a little bit more texture to it, but obviously not so over the top that it looks clearly patterned. Um, but I think this looks really nice and works really well for the project. And you can also see that the edges of the waistcoat are all piped in a black taffeta and I've used the same taffeta to cover all the little buttons down the front as well. The breeches, which actually aren't breeches, they're trousers, are classic uh, full front style of the, the late 18th uh, century into the Regency era as well. Again, they've been made in the same black wool as the rest of the suit, so everything is going to be nice and matchy matchy. Uh, Mr. BLC does have a slight thing for not wearing breeches. He has always insisted some of our earliest uh, forays into uh, costuming of this sort of era um, it was the Regency era, and he point blank refused to wear breeches and stockings um, out and about. So he was very happy to find out uh, that, uh, as I say, the, the Ichabod costume consists of uh, tall riding boots. Um, actually, the original costume is a pair of trousers, um, they're not uh, breeches. I also want to take a minute just to talk about the accessories for Ichabod Crane. Now I am no prop maker so I had to call in a bit of help for this. I want to say a huge thank you to my friend Andy Arbon for providing uh, some of the props for 
this um i will send you a link to his channel um i've up above and i'll pop it down in the description below uh, because he is a whiz at prop building um and he's also a very very clever electronics kind of engineer so andy had actually been planning to do an ichabod cosplay um himself and when he found out that uh, myself and mr blc and our friend julia who i will come on to um at another point um were planning to do uh the, the sleepy hollow cosplay very kindly offered to uh, provide the Ichabod props for us um, and that included um, this fabulous um, doctor's case I can't remember where he said he got it from but he didn't pay anything for it um, or paid very little for it so he's very kindly um, gifted it to uh, me to use for this project and then the pièce de résistance is there in here the goggles, of course it is, I'm very carefully because I'm terrified of breaking them, but look at those, how amazing are these, they're absolutely incredible and these have just been made from found parts um, essentially um, that Andy has I want to say cobbled together but in the most ingenious manner um, and painted them up and they just look absolutely wonderful but you will see a lot more of these in our upcoming final final absolutely final spooky Halloween reveal vlog um, that uh, will be coming very soon but yeah how amazing are they absolutely wonderful and also look at the box that he's made a custom foam board box um with uh, kind of fittings in it so that the goggles fit nice and snugly inside without being damaged and yeah they are just absolutely wonderful so huge huge thanks to andy for providing those um because they are truly truly incredible and I'm very, very grateful for him to providing those. As I say, do go and check out his uh, channel. Onwards to the coat, or I should say coats, plural. So obviously I've been scouring the internet for lots of uh, stills from the film and obviously watching the film as well. Um, and I came to realise that actually uh, Ichabod wears two coats um, as part of this particular costume in the movie. Um, it actually consists of um, a, a classic, a, a jacket frock coat um, in the 18th century style, but he also wears this uh, more straight cut overcoat as well, particularly um, in the scenes where he's traveling and when he arrives in Sleepy Hollow. And it took me a little while to, to figure this out, um, uh, but the clue to, for me was um, that in some of the promo pictures that is that you can see there is several collars going on around the, the neckline. So you can see the collar of the waistcoat um, and then it looks like the, the, the coat has uh, two standing collars. Um, but then I can find another picture where um, you can just slightly tell sort of more that there is a second jacket being worn underneath um, but you can't really see it other than kind of the collar detail um, when he's wearing this overcoat. Um, so I am denied about this for a long while because I didn't really want to make two coats. I don't really see the, the point of, of doing that and the chances of my husband wearing two coats at any point, especially if we're at, at cosplay events or, or festivals and things where we're either outside in the summer or we'll be inside, you know, in a, a convention building or something like that. Um, yeah, the chances of him wearing two wool coats over the top of a wool waistcoat and wool breeches and a shirt and everything else. It's just not going to happen. Um, so I have taken the decision that I will only be making one of the coats um, for Mr. BLC and I've decided to do the more classic 18th century um, uh, jacket that he wears underneath. Looking at um, fil film stills, they do follow a very very similar pattern and style. They both feature um, little sort of pockets um, towards the side. They both are edged in uh, the, the, the piping which matches the uh, the waistcoat. The only real difference that I can discern um, is the the shaping. Uh, it's kind of down the, down the front edges. So on the jacket, it has that slightly more curved, cut open uh, style, uh, which is classic, you know, late eighteenth century. 
Both jackets also feature the, the, the classic button detailing as well, so big sort of feature buttons down one side and uh, the buttonholes on the other. The pattern that I'm going to be using is one that I have used for Mr. BLC before. Um, so I'm going to do an adaptation of the, the, the jacket pattern that I used uh, for our Little Mermaid and uh, Prince Eric uh, steampunk cosplays uh, that we did a few years ago. The biggest job that I have to do on it is to adapt the, uh, the front panels of the pattern to have that more 18th century um, shape to them. And that is where we are going to pick up with my uh, actual uh, footage in the sewing room. Welcome to my sewing room floor, <laughs> surrounded by mannequin butts. <laughs> um, uh, see, I've got the back panels of the jacket on the on the mannequin at the moment, um, and I'm just playing around with how I want the the pleats to go on the back and the uh, uh, the split. Well, we call it uh, the, the riding split is what it would, would have been for originally, but yeah. So the the tail is split. Um, and yeah, I'm just playing around with how I want that to work and how is looking best. Um, because it's very hard to find any imagery or videos from the um, or clips from the the movie that clearly show what's going on at the back. Um, because it's obviously it's a black coat, one over black waistcoat and black breeches, um, and because the movie is so dark because it's Tim Burton and it's spooky. Um, yeah, I'm really struggling to find a good kind of back shot of um, what the back of the jacket looks like. Um, and almost all of the um, kind of stills that I found online or sort of the, the promo shots from the movie, um, they're all front-facing shots, so not really a lot of help. So I'm kind of just going to do it as I feel it should be done. Um, and, yeah, and I think that will that will work. Um, I'm sure it probably does have something like this going on in the back there because it's very much... Uh, an 18th century based coat that uh, Johnny Depp is wearing in, in the movies. Uh, I'm trying to use um, images from extant uh, garments. So this book is the Kyoto Costume Institute collection um, and it's an amazing book um, with fashions from the 18th century um, right through to the, the 1950s, I think this goes 50s, 60s. Um, but yeah, but they have a stunning collection of costumes. Um, one day, if I ever make it to Japan, that's high on my list of places I would like to visit. Yes, so I'm trying to use um, the images that I've got of the 18th century uh, costumes to try and uh, figure out a bit more what I want to do. And what I'll do is I'll just swing the camera around and show you. So although this is 
obviously uh, it's a, a court um, suit, a court dress. Um, so very, very high and very, very fancy and, and highly decorated. Um, the shaping, um, I think, is pretty spot on for what I'm looking for. So as we can see, there is um, a split in the back um, or a vent in the back, um, but it isn't um, like overlapped like a modern suit vent would be. It's actually just a split um, because you can see just see the breeches um, um, showing through there. Um, so yeah, and there's there's clearly no overlap um, that I can see in the, uh, the the back of the jacket there. Um, so that's fine. Uh, and then obviously you can see here on either side where the uh, the panels of the the coat come down. So we've got buttons uh, there, um, but there's definitely um, pleating in here. And I think on this, there is more pleating than what I've got in the jacket that I'm doing. But to be honest, I'm I'm fine. Obviously, this it's a, a lot lower class level of jacket, so I'm not going to be putting extra pleating in just for the sake of it. So I think what I've got is good. Um, so yeah, so I'm just kind of seeing what way I want the pleating to go. And on here, the pleating is folded uh, back towards the sides of the body rather than towards the, the centre back. And if I just bring you back up to the mannequin, that's kind of what I've been experimenting with here. So on this side, um, I've got the pleats are heading towards the side of the body. That's the vent at the back there. And on this side, uh, the pleats are going in towards the centre back. Um, but I'm thinking I like how this is looking on this side. Excuse me, sneeze. <coughs> yeah, so I think that's what we're going to go for. So we've just got a double, a double pleat in there, um, which I think is fine um, because I don't want too much volume, and it certainly doesn't look like there's that much volume in the uh, the, the pictures in the of the costume that as as much as I can tell. So yeah, that's where we're at. Right, I'm hoping I can just film this clip quickly before the battery runs out on the camera. Um, but the jacket is at the point where it's ready for its fitting with Mr. BLC. Um, unfortunately, Mr. BLC is a bit camera shy. He doesn't like to be on camera more than he has to be. So you're not going to see the fitting, I'm afraid. You'll have to wait for the big reveal to see him wearing the outfit in all its glory. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, it won't need too much adjustment. I'm expecting to do a little bit here and there, but hopefully not too much and I'll let you know how I get on but yeah we are at this stage here um, I am obsessed with the pleats in the back of the jacket um, and I think that's gonna look fab when it's all together in the wool um, as you can see I have uh, sleeves in well a sleeve in um, and you can probably see I have put it in inside out just so it's easier for me to do adjustments because I'm expecting this is going to be one of the areas that I will have to adjust. Um, this is quite a wide sleeve um, in my pattern and I don't think um, Mr BLC is going to need it quite that wide and I seem to recall the last time I used this pattern for him I had to take quite a bit out of the fullness in the sleeve. Um, so yeah so I've left uh, the the seam um, on the outside like that just so um, it's easy for me to pin and adjust. Um, I have also pinned in, um, or just pinned on rather, um, the pocket flaps, um, just so I can see where they potentially need to sit, um, whether they're the right size or not. Um, on one side I have done one slightly bigger than on the other. Um, I did a six inch um, pattern um, and then I kind of put it on and it doesn't look very big. Um, and one of the things with 18th century uh, sort of pockets on jackets is they were they were oversized. They were kind of ridiculously big. And in some of the excellent examples I've seen, um, the pocket actually extends almost all the way back to the um, the seam here, the, the back side seam. Um, but I don't really want to do that because I've got the pleats are sat in here. So at the moment, this is sitting just nicely um, 
next to the the bulk of where the pleats are and looking at the images from the the, the movie and the costume uh, photos I think it's in the more or less the right place and I'm hoping it's kind of doesn't need to be much bigger than this um, and then I'm gonna find find the light there we are and then up here you can see I have just um roughly stitched the, the, the collar on, based the collar on um, again so I can just see how that's looking once Mr BLC has got it on um, but yeah that's all looking good the front um, panel I have just pressed over the seam allowance and steamed it in place just so I can get a nice clear um, sort of look at how the, the, the line of the jacket is, is sitting um, I'm not sure whether I'm going to need to cut it back a little bit on each side so it sits more open when he's wearing it. I know traditionally um, these kind of 18th century jackets they did at least fasten or you could fasten the kind of a couple of buttons uh, kind of in the lower sort of chest area here um, but we'd never see that happen in, in the movie. Um, and it's always seen worn, worn open. Um, so if he's wearing it and it's naturally kind of sitting across like that, then that's that's that doesn't look right. So I might need to trim that back. Oh, my battery light's flashing, so I shall have to leave it here for now, and I will catch up with you when I have done the fitting, um, probably tomorrow. So take care. So since I last spoke to you, I have done the fitting with Mr. BLC and I've had to do a few little minor tweaks um, on the on the jacket. Um, as I expected, it was tweaks to the, the sleeve and the, the shoulders, um, which is fine. So I have done those. And as you can see, I am now working in the actual fabric, um, which is this lovely um, black self-striped wool fabric. Um, and as you can see, I am just in the process of uh, putting the pockets in, which as you can see, you go across the side seam here and I've just put some interfacing in just to give them a bit of more structural support and I'm about to start uh, stitching um, the pocket flaps and the pocket lining in place and then I have to do the scary task of uh, cutting the pockets open and yeah obviously at that point there's no going back so <laughs> I shall carry on with that and I shall update you uh, when I am done. The terrifying moment of truth where I now cut a hole in the panels of the jacket. <laughs> no matter how many times I do this and how professional you are, this just never gets any less terrifying because there's no going back after this point. It's 
so terrifying. But this, folks, is how you make pockets. And then basically we fold, oops, fold the, the lining pieces through to the inside. Excuse that rattling around. And basically I need to press that all through so it's nice and neat uh, and press the pocket flap down um, and uh, yeah and just tidy it all up but that's pockets So I've now put the panels of the outer together um, and I've just popped it on the mannequin because I just needed to redraft the collar. Um, one of the things I just did after Mr BLC's fitting was I've just lowered the neckline and just reshaped um, the kind of the collar at the top here just a little bit. Um, so I just needed to redraft and reshape the um, the collar pattern um, because it's now um, it's it's dropped a little bit so I just had to redo that. Um, the lining is together um, and will be ready to go in shortly as well. Um, but the next stage is to, to pop the collar on. Um, so I've got the collar to go on uh, the, the outer in the wall. I've also got the collar to go pop on the lining. Um, and then I'm going to put the two pieces together. Um, and then I have to sandwich the piping all around the edge down the collar and around the front so I can't put the collar on afterwards if that makes sense I have to put the collar on first and then put the lining piece together uh, with the the piping in between um, and then I can do some more finishing off um, I'm going to put these sleeves in after the lining is in so that I can treat the sleeves in the 18th century style which I did for my uh, Katrina gown um, where you create them it kind of in one with the the lining and the outer um and then insert them and i will bind the the, the raw edge of the armhole on the inside um to finish that off um and then it will just be sorting out the the pleats on the back um and the, then do the buttons and detail like that so it's yeah it's getting there <laughs>
So you'll have just seen me making the piping to go around the uh, two front edges of the jacket and the, the collar. Um, the piping is made from, I think it's three mil uh, cotton cord um, and then it's covered in a in bio strips of, um, this is my polyester taffeta um, that I use quite a lot. Um, um, I do like this taffeta because it almost, almost is, you know, a, a, a passable kind of silk effect. Um, it's not like the cheap, like the, the cheap um, polyester you get for sort of prom dresses and uh, that kind of thing. So at the moment I'm just pinning it onto uh, the lining, um, which you can see here. I've put a, a, a strip of self-adhesive um, interfacing um, down this front edge just to give that very front edge of the jacket a bit more body and a bit more structure um, especially because the, the upper half um, here is is going to have buttons and buttonholes um, on it um, so yes yeah, so I think that will just give it a bit more support because the buttons are they're quite big buttons so they'll be quite heavy um, and the last thing you want is for um, the jacket to look kind of saggy and droopy because the, the buttons are too heavy for it so yes, just a little bit of support there. <laughs> right, <laughs> where are we up to? So I have put the two sides of the, the bodice sections of the jacket together and you can also see the, the collar in place on there as well. So inside here, um, which you can't see, um, is the piping. Um, I have stitched all the way around uh, the edge, so the two front edges um, and the, the collar where the piping is. Um, and I've also stitched around the hem, Ooh, left a couple of pins in there. Yeah, stitched around the hem and up the back vent. So I'm now just going to go around and mitre all the corners and snip all the curves and places where um, it will help it to lay flat once it's folded through and then obviously give it a good press um, and then we will be on to the sleeves. Now I'm, I'm aware um, 18th century isn't my era of expertise um, and I've probably not done quite as much research for the menswear part of this as I have the, the women's wear for when I did the, the, my Katrina gown. So obviously we don't really have any real idea of what the inside of um, the Ichabod costume uh, looks like. Um, however, there are a couple of um, uh, stills or shots from sort of behind the scenes on the movie where um, you can just sort of see side on. Um, and I'll pop it in up here so you can uh, see. But yeah, you can just see um, where the the jacket is one open kind of at the front uh, and you can just see where the, the lining um, is a slightly different colour, it's slightly lighter to the um, to the other fabrics uh, in the, the jacket um, and obviously we can see that there's no additional facing in the wool on the on the inside of the jacket. There's also another um, image of the costume on a mannequin along with the Katrina dress and the Lady Van Tassel dress um, it's unfortunately a very heavily watermarked and copyrighted image, so I can't share it. Um, but because it's mounted on a mannequin, um, you can just see a bit more of the lining um, in the lower section uh, towards the, the in the back near the tails. And it looks to me like, again, there's no additional facing or turn up along the back hem. And a very quick uh, search on Pinterest um, for other 18th century menswear garments and they don't appear to have any additional facings either. Um, I expect traditionally or originally um, the linings would have been whip stitched in by hand. In the interest of not having to whip stitch the entire lining in by hand um, I have done the good old fashioned uh, bag lining method. So I have decided that I need to reshape the front of the coat. Yeah, not really what I wanted to be doing today, but there we have it. Um, I did another try on with my husband um, at, just at this point here before I kind of put the sleeves in and obviously started to do this, the finishing details just to make sure I was happy with it and happy with how the, the new collar was looking. Um, the collar is fine, but where I've 
essentially I've taken it back and opened it up more um, that just means that this curve on the front is a lot more pronounced and when he was twirling around in front of the mirror um, it was just flapping it just what kept wanting to flap open so um, yeah I decided I wasn't happy with it and I'm going to reshape it um, not a huge job just a bit of a pain in the ass job um, that I didn't really want to be doing because I just want to get the sleeves in and do the pleats and you know then it's buttons and finishing off um, but yeah so hopefully it won't take too long but yeah I'm gonna crack on with that now and uh, I'll just catch up with you in a bit so I have done one side and I think you can agree that that is actually looking so much better it's such a nicer shape um, and it's more correct to the the film costume as well where this line just flows up past the collar point and into the uh, the stand of the collar um, yeah, that's looking much more uh, more accurate. Um, and yeah, it just look, makes a nicer flow rather than having this big bulge coming out over the front here. It was just looking a little bit odd. So yes, yeah, so I'm really pleased with that. So it's not properly pressed or anything yet. I've just quickly turned it through just to uh, give it an assessment before I carry on. Um, so now I shall tidy it up, um, uh, trim and uh, notch or the, the inside of this curve and do the other side as well. So I'm just going to work on the sleeves now. Um, I do apologise, this is black on black, so you're probably not going to see a great deal of detail on this. Um, but I'm going to make the sleeves for the jacket in the same way that I did the sleeves for the uh, Christina gown, uh, which is to basically sandwich the the outer layers and the lining layers uh, together as one. Uh, then you turn it through and then the, the raw edges and the seams are all encased. Uh, and then you just insert the sleeve um, as, a, as a single uh, piece into the into the arm side and then I'll bind around the raw edges of the arm side on the inside of the jacket. Um, so I have already put the um, piping, that's the word, <laughs> so I've already put the piping around the bottom edge um, and just where it goes up into the, the, the back of the, the cuff. Um, so that's all in place uh, and when I stitch the, the lining in um, I'm going to only stitch down as far as um, where the piping starts and uh, then when I turn it through um, I can just whip stitch that around uh, the, the hem to finish it off. So that's the two sides stitched together. So hopefully I will now turn it through and it will be the right way around. There we are, I've turned it through. Obviously, you need to get press uh, to just tidy up and neaten that the seams up. But you can see the lining is all there in place inside, and the seam line is obviously encasing the raw edges in between. So now I'm just going to tidy up this hem um, and turn that over and just pin the, the lining in place and then I can just whip stitch that around.
sewing task that I've got to do is going to be the buttonholes and yes I am going to do machine sewn buttonholes on what's supposed to be an 18th century jacket um, because one I just do not have the time to do hand stitched buttonholes um, yeah I'm just yeah we're not even going there <laughs> um, but I am very fortunate that my machine does actually do a rounded buttonhole stitch um, which gives it a slightly more period impression than if it was just you know a bog standard squared off buttonhole um, and if necessary I could go over this um, if I wanted to as well uh, with some hand stitching at a later date but for all intents and purposes of this project um, I, I'm just going to do these machine buttonholes this is the largest setting that I can do on my machine and the buttonhole foot is pulled out to its full extent um, and I think that's just about right these are the buttons um, and actually I think the buttonhole is a fraction too small for this particular button size um, but these aren't intended to be functional um, buttonholes they're literally just going to be stitched on for decorative purposes um, and then the once the button is on the other side over there um, I don't think it's going to look too bad <laughs> Ichabod coat and I am super pleased with how it's turned out. Now I'll be honest I hadn't actually realised quite how much footage I had filmed of the making of this jacket because I made it quite quickly and yeah I honestly didn't think I turned on the camera uh, that much but it turns out um, I have only been able to whittle the footage down to a 40 minute video uh, so if you're still watching this um, thank you very much I do really appreciate it um, but yeah I had thought that I didn't have enough footage um, and would perhaps add on the final um, Sleepy Hollow reveal vlog yeah, because this footage is already so incredibly long, um, I'm afraid I'm not going to be adding that onto the end here. So you'll have to just make do with this little, uh, little bit of footage of the jacket on the mannequin. Um, and you will have to make sure you um, come back to see the big final reveal log, uh, which I will try and get up for you as soon as possible after this video goes out. So if you haven't already, please do uh, subscribe to my channel so you can be notified when that video does come out and also, of course, all my other future videos. Uh, and also, if you have liked this video, please do give it a thumbs up by clicking the little thumbs up icon just below. And if you could leave me a comment, that does really, really help my channel out. And um, one of the big things I'm trying to do is grow my channel as much as possible at the moment. And you can help by um, ensuring you you interact with me. So yeah, please do leave me a comment on what your thoughts are on this video. And I will hopefully see you in my next video, which will be the big Sleepy Hollow reveal vlog. And I cannot wait to to show you uh, the, the footage from our photo shoot day because it's amazing. And I hope you're going to enjoy it just as much as we enjoyed uh, making it. So take care, guys. Bye.